Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's New Stand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. How's it going? Uh, the date is April 16th, uh, 2022. I'm going to try to start doing that more often. That's like a professional move, right? That's pro. Um, but uh, how was my week? It was pretty good. We hung in there. Um, took some time. Took some time off. Took some me time. <laughs> so that's been neat. Uh, not for any like, you know, religious reasons or anything, just wanted to vibe. <laughs> and I had some, uh, some like potential work stuff I wanted to look at, like job opportunities, quote unquote, I guess. I don't know. Um, food corner, sadly, not much, nothing major. Um, I'm scanning my memory banks, but I'm not really thinking of any, any good dish. You know, it was pretty just classic Isaiah meals. Um, <laughs> Uh, wait, no, no, I did actually have Taco Bell breakfast, um, they had a, uh, b- like a steak burrito mealy thing, I really didn't get the meal, no, I did, I did, uh, I, I got a steak burrito meal, and I, I think it had, like, tots in it, which is kind of hot, I love that, and then, uh, the thing I like about Taco Bell's, um, hash browns is they're wide, they're wide, <laughs> like, maybe some wide boys, um, so that was nice, also, they had a Cinepack thing. Um, that was pretty good. But the sad it's only like a little two-pack. And I'm like, whatever. It's kind of blown out value. Uh, ooh, that's a beer burp. Oh, there we go. Hold on, one more. No? Okay. Um, but um, so that was kind of tasty. I did that little treat myself. Um, music Corner, though, I discovered that I like Orville Peck. Um, some of my, my friends and stuff have been like sharing little stories or whatever. And I'm like, who's this guy with the cowboy hat and the weird mask, but it's dope. It's some interesting country music. Um, and that's saying something for me because it's not, country music is not high up on my list. Um, but anyway, we can get into some news. We can talk about it. Um, let's see. We are going back to Texas for a couple of beats. Uh, got this from the AP News. Uh, Texas halts truck inspections that cause border gridlock. So this is kind of a story that I thought was a little bit backbeat. I didn't think it was really major. But then I kind of found out a little bit of the aftermath come Friday. Um, and just kind of just like more. It, this is something that really is going to be one of those things that's going to unfortunately add to inflation, add to supply chain issues. Uh, essentially, Greg Abbott wanted to kind of pull another stunt. You know, he's got his, you know, re-election shit in November, so he's hot to trot. Well, maybe I shouldn't say hot to trot. He's uh, he's bound to the wheelchair. God bless him. Um, but um, he's he's revved up and ready to go over any issue he can get. And uh, border control, border patrol, whatever, drug enforcement at the border, he's down. He's trying to fight it. So essentially he ratcheted up things and then also put the onus on Mexico to really like help him or deal with the issue more or less. And then if they weren't going to help and if anything else, then it would be Biden's issue. I don't fucking know. So he's been really perping and um, essentially these increased inspections have like caused up to like 30 more hours to of wait time for trucks. And it's like, that's that's not good. Just on on the fact that you're trying to get your shit from point A to point fucking B in a quick manner because we all want our fucking treats. Um, we can't because of this kind of stuff. Um, also, it's brought up to the one of my friends mentioned on social media. You know, it's like, yo, this is a bunch of produce. This is a bunch of things that people need like that have been sitting on a truck way too long and now they've rotted. Like this is such a fucking waste. It's such a fucking backload now for what? So that Greg Abbott could say he did something like even, um, you know, law enforcement at the local level who are like, you know, enforcing these inspections or whatever. They're like, yeah, this really didn't do anything. It really didn't accomplish anything like any of the cartels that you're trying to worry about or trying to stop. Like they knew about this, so they just avoided it. So it was really a huge L on Texas. And uh, Abbott's like, I don't care. I'd do it again. Like, I wouldn't hesitate, brother. Uh, I wish that's how Abbott sounded. He doesn't sound like that. He sounds like uh, a businessman, uh, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm not hesitant to do so whatsoever. That's, a, that's an Abbott quote from this article. 
um he would just do the shit again he has no sign of regret yeah <laughs> vibes <laughs> um but yeah i just wanted to cover that um a little bit of an update too that dropped with the texas district in terms of like what are they doing in terms of enforcing some of this stuff um got this from cnn uh, Texas district attorney says he will drop murder charge against women in connection with self-induced abortion. So essentially, I guess either maybe through a tip or, you know, like it just became aware to law enforcement somehow that this person had, they didn't name them in the article. Um, but, um, she was like, you know, accused of having a self-induced abortion, obviously by the law in texas they have to enforce that they have to go check it out so she was arrested um but essentially you know once this all made headlines like it was immediately backtracked uh the uh let's see star county where this is at i guess so star county district attorney gotcha alan ramirez concluded that uh concluded that the woman cannot cannot and should not be prosecuted for the allegation against her so i mean essentially he just realized like this is no shot this is not this doesn't have any grounds this isn't worth but it is one of those things where it's like this is the tip of the iceberg for this kind of shit when you make these draconian laws and you put them in place now all of a sudden the wheels of government the wheels of law enforcement have to move as they should to enforce these kind of fucking things and eventually you keep doing it and you keep doing it and eventually it's going to be something that oh well this is this is actually enough in the grounds to stick and we're going to actually pursue it and then and then we go to trial on these kind of fucking things maybe it goes all the way and maybe this person gets convicted maybe not either way this shit is traumatic as hell it's it's hell to go through and I feel so sorry for the person who had to go through this shit. You know, they already had to go through the, the process of an abortion in and of itself. They had to do it self-induced because that's how this has happened. Or if it was just some kind of miscarriage, I don't really fucking know here. Um, what, the bond was 500000 fucking dollars? Like, this, it's a mess. It's a mess of a fucking situation. It's tragic as hell. Um, I can't state that a fucking enough. All because some people want to do the right thing by God. I don't fucking know, dude. Um... It's, this shit just makes me sick. Um, sadly, in more fucking draconian news, our Kentucky neighbors, uh, I think they got this from NBC News. That's the one with the peacock, right? Um, that's that's his, that's the <laughs> length of setting my sources I'm willing to go through on uh, Isaiah's new stand. Sorry. Um, but Kentucky legislator legislature overrides governor's veto of abortion ban. Uh, this ban, this bill bans abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy and calls for regulating the dispensing of abortion pills. Um, let's see if it loads. Here we go. Let's go. Uh, this was something that was interesting to me because I didn't know much about um, Andy Brashear, who is the governor of Kentucky. And um, it was interesting to kind of see his stance on things and see that he is like, you know, obviously, a, I guess, a Democrat. Um, it was sad to say, though, that, you know, despite his veto, the Republican led um, legislator just said, no, we're ramming this through. Um, I would show some more quotes. But it looks like I'm having some technical difficulties. Maybe we'll see if the page loads. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We're doing this live. We're doing this live. OK. All right. Um, but I mean, essentially, here's a quote from one of the Republican representatives. Um, it absolutely makes me sick to have to listen to what's going on out there. And this is in regards to like abortion and then also like trans rights. Cause they also have another bill that they are also pushing through. Um, that's like anti, you know, trans athletes competing in their gendered sports. So they want to be gendered and they have to be like where they're, I guess, biological or they can't compete at all. I don't fucking know. Um, but it is cool to see someone like Andy Brashear step up and say, this is just, there's no point in this. Like, and even if there was a point, like enforcing this is ridiculously hard and it's, re it's a big waste of taxpayer money. Um, I fucking respect that. Like, you know what I mean? You're obviously in the buff here. You're, you know, you're just fucking trying to piss in the wind, but he's trying to do the right thing. And I respect that. I took the hell out of that. So flowers to Andy Brashear. Um, fingers to fucking Kentucky Republican legislator. Um, got good venues, I guess, but like, goddamn, what the fuck? 
Um, that's that's too yee for me. Um, we're gonna move on because, like I said, I'm having some technical difficulties with that page. Um, the next thing I got is from AP News again. Uh, UK plan to fly asylum seekers to Rwanda draws outrage. That's a hell of a fucking sentence. Um, it's a hell of a fucking situation too. Essentially, Boris Johnson came up and he's like, I got a plan. I got a plan for these, um, you know, these people who are trying to come and illegally, you know, cross the channel to get to the UK. And, and we've kind of covered a little bit of this story, too, because people have died trying to make this 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 uh, traverse, um, you know, either from France or what have you to try to get to the UK. Either they're trying to settle there or go, go somewhere else. But I think a lot of people are trying to, like, settle there. Uh, but essentially, this like Tory brained ass logic, and a Tory is pretty much like a Republican equivalent, if you don't know, um, in the UK. Uh, but essentially, the play is oh, we're just gonna like put him on a plane and send him to Rwanda. Like, that's the play. That's the, that's the okay move to do here. And pretty much, even on its face, everyone's like, no, dude, this won't work. Like, that just won't work. Like, there's a logistical nightmare that you're going through here in terms of like making that happen. It's a hell of a waste of fucking money to do that per person. Um, also, Rwanda does not have the space. Also, Rwanda is not a ha- ha- like habitable place for this kind of shit. Like, on the other end, um, like the like Rwanda has kind of okayed this. It still has to go through like you know parliament channels and stuff like that. But like, it, it, they're already at a capacity. And then like even though they're saying oh we're down, like there are like human rights people on the ground saying like no, this is not the place for that. Also, what's most likely going to happen are the people are going to get, sh- like, you know, they're going to get shipped there. They're going to get flown there. They're going to go, okay, this place fucking sucks. Like, this doesn't work for us. This isn't where we wanted to be. And they're just going to move again. And it's crazy that this shit is happening. And I, I don't like being this guy. But it is, like, something that's an elephant in a huge fucking room where it's like, look, Ukraine shit. It's happening. That's that's live shit. I talk about this shit every fucking weekend. But at the same fucking time, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you guys can come through. We know you guys are having like a a huge European problem. So this is a European business problem. You guys can come in. No worries. We understand. We'll we'll get you sorted out. But let's just face it. If you're brown, you can't. You got to go to Rwanda. You got to we got to put you on a plane and send you to Rwanda. It's ridiculous. Like, it's ridiculous to think I was just gonna fly on this on a social scale. And like Boris Johnson, like, nah, nah, this ain't bad. This, this is okay. This is all right. <laughs> I wish I had a good Boris impression. I need to work on that. God damn. But no, that's a dumb move. And I hope that this does not get any traction or get rammed through. We shall see. I will try to keep you posted on it. Um, but wild shit, wild shit, man. Um now, the next couple beats I have are a little bit of old news, but it's kind of still kind of pumping in the international thing, and I wanted to talk about it. Um, essentially, it's um, some stuff going on in Pakistan. Um, it kind of revolves around the prime minister. Uh, actually, a kind of, there's a kind of about it. Um, but let's see. This is from Al Jazeera. Also, um, referencing a little bit too from BBC News, a little bit I've kind of captured there, and a little bit of a melange, um, and it's a couple articles from Al Jazeera. But um, PM Khan gone, uh, Pakistan's political crisis is explained in 400 words, and then the other article is, this is an opinion article, but it's just like a little bit of like insight into the new prime minister that got elected. But uh, the troubled path ahead for Pakistan's new prime minister. So essentially, uh, kind of what I've gathered, and this is kind of sticky because this is like me immersing myself into a political arena that I know nothing about. And I've just learned about it like a week or so ago. So, um, but the prime minister was essentially, you know, a beloved person. He came in a lot of populist like kind of ideals and things like that, but nothing really got done. Uh, there's been a lot of like just unrest in terms of like money and just a lot of shits going on. Um, so essentially there was a big move in, um, the political parties in the Pakistani parliament to oust the prime minister. And essentially like 
between the prime minister and I believe his brother, who was also in power, they were like able to be like, no, we're gonna like, uh, like adjourn this whole thing, and we're going to um, like suspend parliament or whatever. And essentially, that was like a huge thing. That's like, no, you can't do that. So like the Supreme Court ruled like, no, that's not constitutional. You have to go and actually do the vote. And he lost the vote, so he was ousted. Um, so essentially, and like I said, if anyone who knows this shit, you know, can come and be like, hey, Isaiah, I can help you understand this. Please do, because this is a lot to me. Like, this is one of those things where I just was like, I'm going to try to dip my toe in it, kind of figure it out. Um, but he lost the vote. Um, let's see, it required a 172 votes in a 342 seat parliament to pass. Um, it was supported by 140, 174 parliamentarians. Um, let's see. Uh, the passing of the motion came after the country's Supreme Court ruled Khan, who came to power in 2018, acted unconstitutionally and previously blocking the process and dissolving parliament. Um, so let's see in a landmark verdict late on Thursday, this is when the week had happened. Uh, the court restored the house that was dissolved by president Arif Avali on Khan's recommendation. So the president was like, Hey, you know, that's my dude. Don't do this. Like, and it's like, no, this has to happen. And then Khan was like, oh, well, this is, like, a big Western conspiracy because I'm refusing to, like, work with them. And they're, like, in collusion. And then on the streets, also, a lot of people were like, yeah, like, we agree. This is messed up. Like, that's our guy. Um, but there will be another election. Like, this guy was, like, voted in by parliament. The, um, let's see, what is his name? Uh, Shabazz Sharif. Um, who has also, I guess, been, I guess, either indicted on, like, some corruption stuff, but I don't know if that's stuck or not, um, but essentially, he's in power now, I believe, until, like, next year, um, obviously, there's a lot on his plate, because, I mean, there's just a lot to do, there's a lot to be fixed and talked about and sorted, um, like I said, the economy is really in bad shape, um, but yeah, so I wanted to touch on that because that's like an international thing that's kind of been pumping and I wanted to kind of get it on the timeline, I guess you could say, talk about it on the newsstand, if you will. Um, another thing that I kind of was holding off on talking this, talking about, it's a little bit of old news that I wanted to bring up. Um, it dropped on April 4th, the article from the New York Post, but I was kind of like, I didn't know when to kind of put it in, you know, when to kind of inject it, if I wanted to or not, but um, it is a fraud thing. I feel like. So it's something I wanted to talk about. Um, but it's from the New York Post. Uh, Black Lives Matter used donations to buy $6 million uh, Southern California home report. So essentially, you know, Black Lives Matter is like the headline for this. But the three people who bought the home, more or less for themselves, uh, were Patrice Kohlers, Alicia Garza, and... Melina Abdullah. So essentially, they they secretly bought the home. Um, wow! While marking the first anniversary of George of George Floyd's of George Floyd's murder, uh, New York Magazine reported. So I mean, essentially, this is something that is it raises a lot of eyebrows and a lot of people want to point fingers and go, "Oh, see, this is why you shouldn't donate to like Black Lives Matter. This is why this is a." a front or da 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 and this is all a bunch of grifters and it is sad to say that grifters are going to exist in any kind of movement it's why religion is always going to have a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths because yes it's an amazing thing it's a beautiful thing it does great things but in it throughout it are people who are using it for their own means and i definitely feel like this is one of those situations um like pretty much looks like they like bought like a super home you know, while some of these people were claiming that they were like in survival mode, um, also some of these people were already buying up homes and like already had their own little LLC and they were like able to move them the the property so that like you know it didn't look as suspicious. Um, so I mean, it's definitely some shady fucking shit. Um, there's no denying that. Um. And it's definitely one of those things where it's like this money, it's like, what, $6 million. 
donated money, um, it could have been used for way better things. Like it was initially kind of alluded or, you know, said that this is supposed to be a compound to like do a bunch of creative arts and like help people like with housing, yada, yada, yada. But no, that's not really what this is, sadly. But it could have gone to that. You know what I mean? It should have gone to something like that. It could have gone to lobbying efforts so that things could happen on a more political level. Because um, that's really how politi- like politicians change. If, if you haven't learned anything of, you know, I feel like the Biden administration is like the clearest example of how that shit is affected. When you look at Manchin, when you look at cinema, like clearly the money talked there. It wasn't about what actually are democratic progressive values or anything of the sort. Even if you're moderate, fuck that shit. It's about money. <laughs> um, so it's a shame that this money was used for just a few people to just have a good ass fucking time and live in the lap of luxury. Um, at the same time, like I said, that is a, a side effect of this kind of shit. And I don't feel like it should take away from the movement. I remember I've like unfriended people where they're like, oh, the BLM is just a collectivist movement. It's not about actual growth. And it's just a bunch of bullshit to me because it's like at the end of the day, you weren't about the shit because it didn't affect you. You feel like you're not a part of it. So therefore, I got to be upset about it. At the end of the day, there are going to be grifters. Grifters are going to grift. But I do think the movement is a good thing. I do think it's a thing that should be talked about um, and praised. But, um, you know, you're going to take what you can or take what you will out of this kind of shit. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, but I didn't want to talk about it. Um, and sadly, I wanted to end in giving some flowers to my man, Gilbert Gottfried. Um, he died at the age of 67. I uh, got this from TMZ. Um, we're going to we're going to turn one for for our guy here real quick um, for me. Uh, the movie, the iconic thing from Gilbert Gottfried was definitely the voice, obviously, but uh, his voice in um, Aladdin. I'm not a big Aladdin fan, but one of my, my two favorite characters are definitely Jafar and Iago, the, the fucking parrot. <laughs> he was squawking, baby. Um, so it looks like, um, his rep Glenn Schwartz says he died from a heart abnormality called ventricular trachycardia, 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 um, due to myotonic dystrophy type two, um, TMZ has a list of his works, um, you know, it's definitely sad to see him go, he was a legend, um, So, you know, thoughts and prayers with the family, all that kind of stuff. Flowers. Um, That more or less concludes it. We did it, baby. We made it. Um, If you haven't yet, I'd appreciate if you will. uh, Subscribe to the Patreon. Get involved. Uh, $5 makes you a newsie. Gets you Discord access. Gives you a shout out. Uh, You know, once a month, I'll shout your name out. Like uh, Queen Stephanie Renee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's donations like yours that help keep me in the game, help put food in my mouth potentially, or equipment on the table to make this better. And, um, yeah, (laughs) um, I hopefully have a super cool episode, uh, planned for the next one. We'll see, you know, fingers crossed, vibes up. Um, but until then, hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Mwah.